Give us some of the Tibetan throat singing. <clears throat> We're here at the uh, Off Soho Suites in the Lower East Side of Manhattan to uh, talk to Jamie Liddell about his new material, his uh, time doing press here. Get ready but to yeah. spin on your head, your face, your back. Get your throat singing ready because we're going on a journey of suffering, pain, success, happiness, hope, breakthrough, smoke, mirrors, and action. How long have you been in New York this time? About a week and a oh, half. Wow. And, where, and where are you spending time mostly now? Are you still mostly in Berlin or? Mostly, yeah, and uh, in Paris. Because Berlin is so over, guys. Just get over it, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can only see Ricardo play so many times and minimal techno <laughs> is over. But so you, musically, you seem to approach everything through your voice, right? Like that's how you write, that's how you develop everything. <laughs> I mean, that's like your main entry point into uh... I'm over it. Sorry. What was the question? The question, well, that you, that you approach, I think it seems like more than most people, that you approach music through your voice. Like yeah, it comes out in, in talking to yourself, singing things. I, yeah. I, I've come to learn that, that, that it's okay, A, to talk to yourself, because half the time talking to yourself leads to great hooks, which leads to great music. And I think a lot of artists don't, tell the public that they just talk to themselves the whole time. And okay. Well, it's got to be nice to come back and have a lot more, a lot more clout on this front now that it's done it, spectacularly well. It is, well. it is, although it's hard to market me. Because, uh. you know, I'm not John Legend. <laughs> it's hard to market people. God knows why we try, but uh, I, I, I'm happy. I've done, I've done a record I like, and that's all I can do. Okay. And I, I, I want to play the music and um, bring it out even more, you know? I don't want to just roll it out like it is on the record, and I don't want to succumb to pressure of like, yeah, but Jamie, you know, you've got a new audience now, you have to preserve, and people, we could make money here. You know, it's yeah. the whole Beck thing, just really like push things forward. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's a great, he's a great guy. Well, I mean, there's a lot of kinship man. between what you guys do, right? I mean, yeah, it, it's, it's really healthy to actually see how someone's been able to navigate their career and be a real chameleon and, you know, and yeah. make that interesting. You know? it's, it's, just, it's really tough what he's decided to do, you know, because he's a great artist and he could be seen just as a prankster, but he's much more than that, you know. So I think it's easy to kind of roll out the irony you know, and I think everyone suffers from that. No one wants to be boring. At yeah. the same time, there is a part of you that wants to be, to sincerely say something, you know. It's, it's yeah. a fine line with the art game, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Especially in the music game, you know. Sure, this album is pretty commercial and poppy, but it's only because I like making that at the moment. Okay. People can think I'm a liar or whatever, but I, it's true. I make loads of crazy music still, and I just choose not to release it because I don't know, it doesn't feel like it's really coming from the right place. Wait, so when you said earlier that, you're still, that you still make the crazy music on the side. Do you, I don't know what you mean by crazy, actually, in that context. I assume you mean some out there electronic stuff. Um, I don't know, the other th last night, actually, I turned on my laptop and I brought up some music program and I thought, why am I always looking at kind of stupid shit on the internet? I should be making art. Ah. So I, I opened the <laughs> computer and I was like, all right, I'm going to have a go. And I spent about 10 minutes doing something with the computer, like making a beat or something, and I was like, really doesn't interest me. I was like, I'd rather just knock on wood. Uh -huh. Just actually get in there in the room with the people that you collaborate just, with. I think for me, it was once I discovered microphones, and that was a long time ago, just like how fun they are, you know? Yeah, yeah. How, like, you know, obviously, there's so many sounds, sonic friends, if you like, around us. We just need to kind of bring them together and force them to have a party with each other. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then after a while, they get relaxed, limber up. Mm -hmm. Some of them have babies. <laughs> and you can just watch them grow. And it's like, you know, off your sonic friends and yeah. just watch their life from afar. That's what I do with my records. Yeah. Now, well, let's see what else I need to ask you about. Um, Maybe I could dance on that table. I'm willing Absolutely. to give it a go. It'd probably look a bit more Russian. 
Can you can you do that sort of um, like squat and kick? I don't dance? know. I'll give it a go. Yeah, give it a go. Oh, can it take my weight? How'd you do it? It's like in uh, fourth grade, but it's. Um... <laughs> this is great because if this breaks, we will have proper like you know. Electric boogaloo. Pop star breaks up hotel furniture moment. What about like that? <laughs> That was good. Ah, that was true b-boy stuff. Uh, yeah. You're going to make that speed that up so it looks like <laughs> impossible. Loop it so that you're really going around. <laughs> we'll see what they're going to do with, uh, with our images later. I think they're going to cut it down to a three second segment. Talk about the boogie. Culture. Blah, blah, blah. He probably wouldn't. Shed. Good posture. So. <laughs> the break dancing alone uh, can, can be a good Jim, seven minutes. Thank you very much. <laughs> That'd be great.